news flash for you. Dupes can fly! Look at this guy go. Look at him dig. Oh, man. This is going to be amazing. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the space industry preview. This is going to be the next update that's going to be coming to Oxygen Not Included two weeks from the date of this video. So in this update, there's a lot of endgame stuff that revolves around new rockets and more planets to go and explore. But there's also some other changes and new elements that they've added to the game that are going to fundamentally change the way that we play the game currently. Let's start off with the rockets. There's a couple of new engines we have available to us. One of those is a steam engine, and then you also have a hydrogen engine. If you need a little extra thrust, you can throw on a solid fuel booster. There's a couple of new modules for the rocket as well, such as the sightseeing module and the research module that allow you to go out there, get some research, bring it back, and then we can add that to our total research tree. And as you can see, once we start to look into this, there's a fair bit more over here on the rocketry side. So rather than simply just having rockets, we now have many rockets. Actually, your steam engine is like the first thing you're going to get. You don't get to the petroleum engine until later on. So so we'll see if we can get a steam rocket off the ground. I mean, that would be, would be pretty good. One of the other things you're going to see when you load up the game here is a new load game system here. You can see some, some autos, the newest save that you've saved out. I like it. It keeps things a little bit more organized rather than a giant list. I need to reload it because I just deleted half my rocket and I didn't want to do that. They've added some new automation to the command module and space scanners so they can monitor incoming rockets and whatnot. So over here you can see we have meteor showers or you can track the different rockets I have right here, which is the Hydro Dragon or the Magic School Bus or Steampunk down there. So along with all of this is new destinations out here in space. So you can see you can go really, really far all the way out there. Look at that. Way out here. And with that, you can bring back new materials. So those three new materials are niobium, isorzin, and fullerene. Now this is all processed in a new piece of equipment called the molecular forge. So the cool thing about the molecular forge is that it opens us up to some really cool materials. So if we take tungsten and niobium, we can make thermite. And thermite is used for its high thermal conductivity in this game. So if you take a look at the properties of that, it has a thermal conductivity of 220. Now this next one's my favorite. If you take petroleum and azorzin, you can combine it to make visco gel. Now in a previous version of the game, way, way, way back, Natha, which was essentially a melted plastic, could build vertically and then be used in such a way that we could separate gases from one from another with letting solid objects pass through and then they patched that and got rid of that characteristic but this brings back what we used to be able to do with natha so that's what i did right down here this is a liquid gel and inside of here is a vacuum so this is a vacuum chamber and then we have another visco gel barrier right there with extremely high pressure gas on the other side beautiful there was so much fun stuff we could do with visco gel and now it's actually part of the game as it's intended you can see the description right here polymer with extremely high surface tension preventing flow and allowing solid objects to be immersed and removed without disturbance yes so that's great for storage containers i think and it's great for obviously creating airlocks <laughs> or liquid locks or whatever. I mean, essentially, if you can get yourself to some visco gel, man, you're gonna have a lot of fun. Albeit, it's a little bit late game because you need a Zorzin. Now this next one here is a bit more disruptive. So if we combine Abyssalite and a Zorzin, we can get insulation or it's, it's basically, yeah. So insulation is what Abyssalite used to be. So if you actually go down here to tiles, you'll see that you can no longer build things out of Abyssalite. However, you can build it out of insulation. So depending on your current base setup, that's something you're definitely going to want to pay attention to before you go and bring in the next version of the game. Because if you have plans where you're absolutely relying on a very high thermal separation between two areas, well, it might be a little bit harder to get your hands on. But then again, let's not forget that insulated tiles are also really effective and there's other materials that have a very low thermal conductivity. So sedimentary rock or igneous rock is kind of your very early game new insulator now. And then once you get a little bit further into the game, you can use ceramic. And then at the very end, once you kind of got your space program up and you're 
you're harvesting planets and whatnot or whatever the celestial bodies are then you can start building insulation because you're going to need that azorzin and azorzin it says it comes from space let's see if we can find any of it well i'm not i'm not seeing any but this is still early on in the in the new update so it's not final yet we'll see how things balance out here by the time they actually go to roll it out moving on to this next one we can convert sandstone into dirt at a one-to-one -one ratio and that that right there is really useful and the final thing that we can do in the molecular forge here is make super coolant. Now, super coolant is is right there with visco gel as far as things that has me interested in. And what? So here's the awesome thing about super coolant. Look at this. It doesn't become a gas until it's up to 436 degrees Celsius, and it doesn't become a solid until it's negative 266 degrees Celsius. So that right there is a massive range for that liquid. Not only that, look at its specific heat capacity and thermal conductivity. They're huge. By comparison, if we take a look at water, water has half the specific heat capacity of supercoolant and a much lower thermal conductivity. If we compare this to the other thing that we use a lot of, which is hydrogen, you can see that the specific heat capacity again there is, is much, you know, there's a huge difference. And look at the temperature at which hydrogen will turn into a liquid liquid it's negative 252 degrees celsius so you can take super coolant and you can liquefy hydrogen and you should be able to do it relatively efficiently now the reason you would want to do that is to power up things like your hydrogen rocket here so you can liquefy hydrogen and pump it in there and just blow off into space the other thing is that if you take a look at the oxidizer tanks it's more efficient when using liquid oxygen over oxalite. So there again is another reason to use supercoolant to cool oxygen down to the point of turning it into a liquid so you can pump it around. So that opens up a lot of really cool creative ideas for creating systems that are going to liquefy a lot of these gases. The other thing I want to point out here is this new critter called the Chauvel. So as it eats dirt, you can see what it's doing right here. It actually ate some and then <laughs> it pooped out dirt as well. So what this thing does is it eats regolith, dirt, and iron ore, and you find them on the top of the map. So right up here where all this meteorites and everything hit, and it'll consume that and rebuild the map a little bit. So this is one critter that's actually working to bring the map back in. Now to combat that, I have a robot miner, which is another piece of equipment that I have here. And as you can tell, it's kind of over here as well. You know, just spawning into different places because who wants to dig anymore? Especially if you got jetpacks. You can just like fly around and pick stuff up. So the key to the Chauvel is that they actually excrete more than what they eat. So you can see that it consumes 14 kilograms per cycle, but it excretes 500% of that. So when you dig that out, you actually get half of that back. So it's like 250%. So essentially, if you take these guys and you just combine them into a little area like this and feed them dirt, they will continuously make more and more dirt for you. And I believe that really kind of brings this update to a point where the game is more or less designed to be sustainable, such in the way that you can actually kind of get to this last point where you can go and you can go off and explore, you know, different planets and whatnot. So long as a disaster doesn't strike, I mean, you, you now have a way to create more of, of key ingredients here. Iron ore, dirt, and regolith. It's also worth noting that the solid fuel thruster uses iron as fuel. Now you've already seen jetpacks. These are probably the coolest things that are in the new update here. <laughs> Who needs ladders when you got jetpacks, right? Hey, 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 hey! Oh man. Just like when I went to use the Natha barriers here you can see that duplicates will disrupt this material as they move through it so mm, we're gonna have to look through that a little bit right there you can't just make a giant wall you're yeah, gonna have to be a little bit more strategic about it learning stuff already obviously you have the robot miner up here great way to maybe combat stuff that's building up on the surface again kind of tend to different uh critters or to just dig because you're too lazy to dig you can also hook them up to automation as well, so that's cool. So on the last bit of news here, the Neural Vacillator actually has a new look. 
or a temporary new look. It will have a new look. As far as I can tell, it has the same sort of effects though. Oh, and by the way, you can feed these uh, shovels here using the critter feeder as well. Even though currently it doesn't have the actual critter in there. You just set it to like dirt or whatever. All right, so let's fire off some rockets. We're gonna start with the steam rocket here. <laughs> I had to take it all the way down to a command module and just the engine. And hopefully they'll adjust that because otherwise it's kind of hard to do. All right, looks like we have a meteor shower. My space scanner detected something coming in and well now it's just messing me up a little bit here. Let me just take care of that. I'm gonna load up my first astronaut here. Are you there yet? And she's going to jump into the little steam rocket here and we'll get her off into space. Boop. Where are you going, Buzz Lightyear? Buddy, why, why did you put an ammo suit in there? All right, so that rocket is ready to go, but unfortunately we're under a meteor shower at the moment. Uh-oh, that one got covered. <laughs> don't, don't destroy my stuff. And why, why isn't that plugged in? Struggles. Well, okay, that idea didn't work out. Probably if I had another layer of doors up here, I could just open it up so it doesn't, ah, keep covering up my stuff. What a pain in the butt. All right, looks like the skies are clear, so we're ready for liftoff. Okay, there we go. Okay, here we go. First blast off of the space engine. Or space rocket, uh, steam, whatever, you get the idea. These should really be closed. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Oop, oop. Okay, that was a little close. Oh no, it just disappeared. But there it goes. Cool. I like it. Uh, it's kind of hot, though. Holy hotness! Look at how hot that is! Oh! 1,200 degrees Celsius? Oh, man. Whoa. Whoa. Close that sucker down. That steam is roiling hot. Super hot. Wow. All right, so the cool thing that we can see here is that you can see where the rocket is, and you can actually see it's percent complete. Let's go ahead and throw Buzz Light here in the Hydro Dragon. And we'll try to get some more fancy stuff out of the research module, you know, the cargo bay and whatnot. Buzz? Yo, Buzz, where you at? Why is there not ever enough gas? I know it's hot. It's like really, really hot. The struggles, I try. Okay, we're just gonna fill that with a vacuum, and there we go. Problem solved. Buzz, man, why aren't you going up there? Hello, Travaldo? Buzz? Well, it looks like Travaldo wants to do it. Has Atmos. <laughs> okay, well, there's a little bug. He walked into the thing with an Atmos suit. Okay, after a little bit of struggling, there we go. Ha! Rocket's ready to go. Definitely gonna close that door up and... Here's <laughs> where everybody's gonna get destroyed. <laughs> See if I can get Buzz over here before I launch off yet another rocket. Open, open, open. Uh-oh! Buzz is having some serious issues. All right, so we're gonna throw Buzz in there, Devin in there, Rowan in there, and they'll be able to observe what's going on. No! Not another meteor shower. Uh, at least you're trying to take care of it. Uh-oh. Well, this isn't gonna work out good. Crap, now I'm out of power. Keep opening. Rowan, where you going, buddy? Ah! Okay, so many dupes are having issues uh, trying to make it over there. Rowan, Rowan's done for. Why? Why aren't you going to the sightseeing module? This thing's gonna leave without you. Come on, mate. I believe in you. You can get there. Look at this. Watch this in normal speed. Oh, dude, you need your jetpack. Devin, what are you? Why do you keep coming back to this spot? Arr, get in the stupid rocket, beep. Ah! Meep, where are you going? Go in the rocket. Hello? Just, there we go. Just had to reload the game. Now dupe will go in the rocket. See if I can get these other dupes in here. All right, there's one seat left and two of you are here. Okay, there we go. Oh, hey, look who's back. To burn us all to death again. Crap, let the doors open. Oh, man. All right, it was, it was a bit of a struggle, but we can analyze different objects out there in space. You can see what you can get out of it. And you also get research and whatnot. Look at that, 90,000. Get way, way out here and you can see what we have available. Let's look at this one. You can get water, algae, oxygen, dirt. Not a big deal there, but natural gas, hydrogen, obsidian, abyssalite, 
Could bring back magma, that'd be kind of dangerous. Radium, now that's an interesting thing because it's eventually gonna be used as a power source, but currently it doesn't really have a use in the game. So let's see where we can go with this crazy hydrogen rocket. Wow, we can go all the way out here. So let's go visit a terrestrial planet. See how long that takes. Oh, wow, this is gonna be, in look at, watch this. <laughs> Holy moly, that's a lot of heat. Look at this rocket though. That is so cool. Look at it. Oh no, it disappeared. Come back. Well, there it goes. Off into space somewhere. Okay, looks like these doors want to close up for another meteor shower, but you know what? I'm not going to wait for it. Let's see where the magic school bus can take us. Ooh, we can go all the way out to the organic mass. Let's go for it. Now this one's going to be awesome. Look at this. Boosh. Look at all that fire and everything. <laughs> Yeah, that stuff's gonna get wrecked. Okay, so as with the previous rockets, yeah, the temperature's still gonna be kind of a hard thing to deal with. All right, so check this out. The furthest mission is going to take 30 cycles. But the Magic School Bus going about half the distance is only going to take 15 cycles. So, I mean, there's definitely more to this update as far as, you know, what we can do here with the research and then kind of process that down here in the virtual planetarium. You can see what that's designed to do. It kind of takes stuff from the telescope and processes it. So there you have it. That is the space industry update. That's going to be dropping into the game here in the next couple of weeks. Some interesting things. I definitely like the idea of a jet suit being able to go out there and do things without ladders. The new critter is a big plus in kind of the things that we could do with dirt. But there's some more challenges to the game as well with the changes to Abyssalite. And definitely, if you really want to get into rocketry, there's a good amount of technical difficulty to achieve that as well. Or to be successful in that. Hope you guys have found this video somewhat informative or helpful. Let me know what you think about this update in the comment section down there below, and especially if you got some ideas for that super coolant. I'm looking forward to playing around with that. Have a great day, guys. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar, out.